you see we're right off the main lake point just about a hundred yards in in the creek this is the same cove where you saw me earlier in the year crank up some bass that were over five and six pounds and we're flipping these docks these docks have been traditionally really good in the last few weeks they're not necessarily on what you would call a jig bite but they are I was telling uh, Mark is they're on a flipping bite it can be a pocker crawl a grande bass like a worm or a lizard or uh, a tube uh, or the jig but they're on a flipping bite and they're up on the first or second post of the docks right off the sea walls and on the edges of pads that's the ticket right now three or four more weeks they'll be on a, a hot spinner bait rattle trap chatter bait bite and you know, they'll move and it'll change the whole dynamics of it oh that's nice that's five pounds bring him over here and I'll land him Right here, right there. That's it. There he is, and there he is. Look at that baby. That's Jeez. five and a half pounds. And uh, what were you saying about the stomach on him, buddy? That's a belly there, buddy. Okay, and uh, who told you to put that jig on? <laughs> Steve, we were having all kinds of trouble, and I uh, said so we've got to be able to locate these things. All we have to do is just get in there and flip that jig in these docks. I said that's going to tell you right there. Look at the belly on that. I said if they if they don't hit the jig in the docks. I said, might as well go home. That's, that's the key. That's going to tell you. I said, we throw soft plastics and jigs into the docks, and then look at that baby. Boy, that's yeah. got some weight. That's really go, heavy. See, what happened was, we're working oh. these docks here. Show them this dock right yeah. there, Skip. Okay. This is right across from Hopkins. And what we're doing is working these docks. So I came up here. I said, look, we're going to flip these docks in here before we go. I said, because if you work these docks, you don't catch anything. You're always throwing a spinner bait at them, throw a crankbait at them, throw uh, buzz baits at them, even soft plastics, but you don't throw jigs at them. I said, and that's what they're hitting. I said, they're really on that jig bite. That's five pounds, five and a quarter. Oh, man. Oh. What did I just tell you, huh? <laughs> tell them what Listen. Mr. Steve said. Uh, Steve was saying I got a five pound right off that corner, uh, and it was a light bite. And sure enough, I feel something, just a, a little bite, slam the hook home, and uh, here we go. Now tell them what you're using to catch it on. We've switched up. I'm using the black and blue jig. I said we should, you know, definitely use different baits. Right. So we can figure out what they're hitting on. We're both pitching along that corner, or along that wall. Doesn't make sense both be throwing the same thing. So um, I've got a Grande Bass Megatail Rattlesnake in a plum, uh, red bug color. I don't want to hold now those grande bass, that's the ones that I just put up on the site yes. for you to buy. Uh, they've yeah, got lots of different baits. They just came in. You can get them. Just click on the Tackle Warehouse banner in our tackle store. I bought these uh, a while ago from Grande Bass directly. They also make a good uh, bait uh, called the, the rattlesnake, uh, just the regular rattlesnake, and it's similar to a Hag's Tornado, if you know those. Yeah. Uh, this is a nice, nice fish here. I'm going to put them back in. And he swims off. Easy. Very right. good. good. He's easily three. Now tell him how you caught that one. Uh, I uh, pitched this uh, megatail rattlesnake that's been mangled under that dock, and I felt something. I wasn't sure if I was stuck on a piling or if I had a fish. It turned out to be a nice, healthy bass. That was a real nice, healthy bass. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes, another one, right out of the same dock. Decent, decent bass. All right, let's get this one back in. Let's try and get some more. We need a bigger one than this. Right out of the same dock. Five Got minutes. Let's see. Yamamoto cuttail worm. Flip that into the dock right here. Nice bass, good three pounds. Early in the morning, flipped it right into the dock by this boat. Bank, bank, hit it right away.
out of the dock. Coming out of the dock. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on up here, baby. There you go. Yamamoto cut tail worm flipped into the dock. That's where they are. Alright, alright, there we go. Out from under the same docks as yesterday. Same thing, Yamamoto cut tail worm. Just want to make sure that worm is nice and straight on the hook, like that. Hanging nice and straight. Doesn't have to be skinny. If they're soft, it'll pull right through. Flip it right into down here in Rehoboth Beach. It's the Yamamoto cut tail worm. You can see this is a giant bass. This weighs a good five and three quarters, maybe six pounds. Got enough weight for a six pounder. But that's a beautiful, beautiful fish. It is. See. Isn't that nice? Nice fish. Oh, yeah. Right here early in the morning, water temperatures are probably dropped 10 degrees. It's only 57, 58 degrees here right now. Steve, that there is a big bass. Right out of the other docks. This is not five, but it's four pounds, four and a quarter. Got the weight, I think, I'll tell you. It doesn't have the length, but man, I'll tell you, the thing feels like it weighs almost five pounds. Just monstrous. It's got a big mouth. Look at that Yamamoto cut tail worm down in there. Nice, nice bass. Look at that. Oh, yeah, came right out of that dock. Oh, this is decent. Man, look at him going. Oh, yes. Oh, man. He's really fighting. What a decent bass. Oh, yeah. Nice. Nice fish. Nice fish, Steve. Slipped it in that main lake dock. I thought they'd be on these main Where I told you. Said the last time I was here, and this look at the size of a nice, good three pound bass. Look at that. Look at that. Right where he should have been, too. Oh, Skip, back. tell him what I told you about that dock. You just said flip back to the back side of it. I said it every it. time, man, I said there's one there. You know, I said I've been catching them there. Flip right to that back side there where the shade is. He flipped it in. I got it. Yep, right on the first pole. Yeah, I mean, they're I, pretty I predictable if you can get in the right bass, position. Boy, that's a nice bass. See that? Decent. Really, really decent bass. Caught right here at Silver Lake. Used a little weighted hooks, 40-pound test braid. See that grandy bass? has the ribs in the back of it. It's a seven, uh, seven and a half or eight inch worm. I think it's eight inches, but uh, this is beautiful, beautiful bass caught right here on the uh, Grandy Bass Mega Tail rat Rattlesnake. It's uh, eight inch bait right there. Eight inch bait. This what is you nice. do is when you rig this bait, I've got it on a little weighted hook. This is a uh, eighth ounce, but however you rig it, you bring it up through, rig it straight just like you do a Texas rig worm, any other worm, but it has these little ribs in it. So you can just bring the hook point out, put it in one of the ribs, totally weedless. It's got an action like you can't believe, worth every penny. They're just so superior in the action, the feel. Um, didn't even rip it up, and even though I, that was a decent bass and I bought it for a little while. Nice worm, right down here out of the docks, one block away from the ocean. You can still hear the waves yeah, crack. Much better, down here by the bridge. Look at that, Grandy Bass, oh yes, oh, oh yes. yes, look at that, oh look at the bass on him, oh this is the one that uh, I caught the other four or five days ago I think or similar, oh it's got all kinds of weight, it weighs almost five pounds, look at that, oh yes, look at that Grandy Bass, he's tore it all to pieces, see I'm using that little weighted swim bait hook instead of pegging it with an eighth ounce or three eighths ounce bullet weight, uh, 40 pound test uh, power pro braid on a spinning rod so you can really skip it under the docks. You get down low on your knees and just skip it under. I threw this right in here at the bridge pylons and uh, threw it in at the first bridge pylon. You just slowly raise it up and then just twitch the rod tip. I'm using that G Loomis rod and the G Loomis rod's real sensitive and you just twitch the rod tip. And man, he giant, really. Man. But there we go. I used this, this is a, called a big bite worm. Uh, this is a 10 inch worm. Uh, bass is nice, weighs uh, about two and three quarters, almost three there pounds. There you go. Grande bass. Five and a half pounds. Easy. Oh, he's almost shaking out of my hand. Five and a half, maybe six pounds, right out of here underneath this dock. That's where Skip caught one before. 
right to the right of this bush. Nice bass. All right, we're going to let this one go. Nice bass. Oh, yes. Look at that. Right back down into the dock. So you have to be able to flip right underneath these docks. You could try skipping under with a spinning reel. If you're not that good at uh, flipping and pitching, but it's about a 10 or 12 inch space. You got to get right underneath those docks. And that's where they're laying. That's a nice bass. That was six pounds each. Well, I switched to this jig now. This is a flipping jig, a Davis flipping jig, double rattles on the back with a uh, sweet beaver trailer on it. Uh, different color, different weight. Flipped that into all the other docks I've already flipped and some that I haven't. And on the way, I threw the rattle trap down at uh, all the rocks, all the riprap and little chunk rock through the rattle trap all down through that. Now I'm going to flip this up here into some other really shallow docks because I've tried the deep docks. See what that does on the there way back. There we go. There we go. Yes. Yes. All right. There we go. Out of the main lake docks. Switch jigs. Carefully flipped it under there. Pulled him out of the main lake docks. Right here off the main lake. Right off the main point. There he is. Davis flipping jig, sweet beaver trailer. Nice bass. It's about two and a half pounds. There you go. Got another one. Same way. Flipping out here on the main lake docks. That's it. Oh, right out of the jig. On the jig. Right out of the dock here where we got one yesterday on the way home. Nice bass. This is uh, uh, almost five pounds. Right there on the Davis jig again. Same one you see me using with the sweet beaver trailer. Got the weight, yeah. About, about five, five, two. Here, what we right want to do is come in really, really close, okay. you know, on the shore. Okay. And then just try to hold off of, you know, them, even if we have to stay on the, you know, inside edges. You know, and then as, if the wind really starts to blow us and blows us too far, too fast past them, then just spin back around and come back in again up against the shore the other way, you know, into them. Because even if we're in close to the shore, if we can reach the first or second post. There he goes. Not quite five, but close. Get back down in there. Came right out from the edge of this dock on the second pylon. You want to flip each one of the posts when you come into a dock like this. Start on the outside edge if you're out there in the front of it or you start right here on this inside edge and then just flip each post quiet flip you want it to enter the water as quietly as possible and then just pick each dock apart there we go. not quite as big as you can see this is what they're hitting that's a davis jig it's got the mega claws trailer on it check the colors three a amps Nice bass, really, really decent bass. Not as big as the last one, not five pounds, but it weighs almost four pounds. <laughs> Got the length of about a three, three and a half, but it weighs four pounds. It's a really nice bass. All right, let's get this one back in. We'll see you in a okay, minute. my friend, back down you go. There it goes. You had to make a specific flip that time. You had to be able to flip it out. That's about. 35, 40 feet minimum, I guess, maybe 40, 50 feet to the end of the dock. And you have to get all the way up underneath of that in the center before it'll hit it. Uh, this real specific type of cast you have to make to catch them. You'd think there weren't any bass here at all if you didn't make the right cast, the right presentation.